Hi everybody, welcome back to our BC Kids Church Online. I hope you've had a good week and enjoyed a little bit of sunshine too. So over the last few weeks we've been looking at the story of Daniel and last week was our last session on Daniel. So today we're going to have a look at a story about Jesus' ascension. Do you know what ascension means? Yeah, that's right. It means to go up. Can you reach up as tall as you can? Brilliant. Well done. Well, I've got a little trick that I'd like to share with you and you can try this at home too. So for this trick, you will need some raisins, some fizzy clear liquid like lemonade or fizzy water, and a glass. You need to pour your fizzy water into your glass and then you can pop your raisins in, wait and watch to see what happens. Slowly, the bubbles carry the raisins up. They ascend. Now Jesus didn't get taken up to heaven in a bubble, but he did get taken up in a cloud. Let's go over to my friend Brooke's house now to hear about the story of Jesus' ascension. Well, hi everyone. How are you doing? How are you getting on? It's really strange at the moment, isn't it? And sometimes pretty hard when we have to spend so much time away from people that we know and love, not seeing our grandparents or our uncles and aunties or our cousins or our friends, friends from school. And do the things that we normally do, like go to school and play and those kinds of things with our friends. We miss all that, don't we? And it's hard being apart. Recently, in Transformers, we heard about Jesus dying on the cross and how his followers were really sad. But then three days later, Jesus came back to life and they were absolutely overjoyed. They saw him again and they hang, hung out together they ate meals together and they went for walks and they did things together. And so today I'm going to tell you about three different occasions that Jesus' special friends saw him alive after he had risen from the dead and before he went back to heaven. So here's the story. I'm going to read from the Storyteller's Bible. When Jesus came back from the dead, he appeared many times and in many different places. His friend, friends were hiding in a locked room, so the men who killed Jesus couldn't find them. And all of a sudden, Jesus was there in the room with them. They were frightened. They were confused. They thought he was a ghost. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's me. It really is. Look, here are the marks in my hands and the nail of the nails in my hands and the cut the soldier's sword made in my side. Then Jesus joined them for dinner and ate a bit of food to prove that he wasn't a ghost at all. A few weeks later, his friends were out fishing. They couldn't catch a thing. Then, all of a sudden, they heard a voice from the shore calling, Throw your nets on the other side of the boat. And when they did, they caught more fish than their boats could hold. Wait a minute, said Peter. This is the same thing that happened all those years ago when Jesus asked us to follow him. It must be him on the beach. And all of a sudden, G Peter jumped into the sea, clothes and all, and swam back to shore. The other friends followed as fast as they could and when they arrived they discovered that Jesus had been doing some fishing of his own. 
Jesus was cooking fish over a hot fire. They smelled delicious. Dry yourselves off. Sit down by the fire, Jesus said. Let's have a picnic right here on the beach. A few more weeks passed and at last the time came for Jesus to leave, to go to heaven and be with God his Father. So he took one last walk with his friends up a hill near Lake Galilee where their adventures together had begun. I've got to go now, Jesus said, and there is something I want you to do. I will send you a special helper, God's own Holy Spirit, and with his help, I want you to tell my story to the world. Start in Jerusalem and don't stop until everybody has the chance to follow me. And if ever you feel scared or alone, don't worry. Just talk to me and I'll be with you, I promise. <clears throat> then, all of a sudden, a cloud wrapped itself round Jesus and carried him into the sky. His friends stood and stared, their mouths open, their eyes filled with tears, until two angels appeared and spoke to them. Don't be sad, the angel said. One day Jesus will come back in the clouds, just as you've seen him go. So off the friends went, down the hill and into the whole world to tell the story of Jesus. Well, that's exactly what they did. They told everyone about Jesus and about how much God loved them. How do we know that? How do we know that they did that? Well, because the whole story was written down in the Bible for us. And 2,000 years later, I've been able to tell you too. Isn't that amazing? Now, I'm sure you're looking forward to being able to be back together with your wider family and your friends. Me too. It's great making video calls to them, isn't it? But it's not the same as actually being with them. But also, I'm really looking forward to seeing Jesus because the good news is that he's coming back. He's coming back, yeah, really. And we're going to see him and then we're going to spend the whole of what is left of eternity with him, enjoying being with this wonderful person who loves us so deeply. But before he comes back, we've got a job to do, like his, his friends at the time, his disciples, his followers. And we've got to tell our friends too that Jesus loves them. Thankfully, he sent his Holy Spirit to help us and to reassure us that Jesus is with us always. There are going to be times when it's tough, when life is difficult and, you know, we do find it hard. Sometimes we are shy, we don't feel very confident about telling our friends about Jesus. But do you know what? The Holy Spirit can help us. He can give us the power, the, the ability to talk to people very simply about what we know about Jesus and the fact that he loves them too. So I'm going to pray for us now and ask that, that the Lord would help us, help you, help me to do those things that we need to do. And through this difficult period particularly, that he would help us to know that he's always with us. So perhaps you'd like to close your eyes and we'll pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us always. You never leave us on our own. Thank you that you are able to do far more than even we can ask. You have all power and we thank you that you're able to be with us right now. Help us through this difficult time when we're isolated away from school and friends and our wider family and relatives. 
And we do find that hard. We pray you be with them and with us, protect them, keep them safe. And we pray, Lord, help us to appreciate the fact that one day you are going to come back to take us to be with you forever. And that that will be such a wonderful time, a time when we can really be with you and know your presence. So help us today to go out and share that good news we've got of who you are and your love for our friends, for our family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, goodbye. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care. God bless. Thanks, Brooke. I really enjoyed that story. Did you? Next week, we'll find out more about the special power that Jesus told his disciples to wait for. So make sure you join us for that.
Okay, so it's our memory verse challenge time this week. Your verse to learn was Psalm 17 verse 6, which said, I call to you, God, and you answer me. So well done to those that have entered. I've got your names in this hat. Have a little shuffle round and let's see who our winner is this week. This week it is Erin's turn to win. <laughs> well done Erin. That's great news. A prize will be on its way to you this week. Now we've got a new memory verse for you to learn. And this week it's going to be John chapter 14, verse 27, which says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, which are words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. So learn that verse this week because it's going to be our very last memory verse challenge. So if you want to be in with a, pri a chance of winning a prize, then this is your last chance because next half term we're going to change the challenge to something new. So have a go at that one, send your video in to me, sarah at bcbygrace.co.uk and I look forward to having a look at those. Well that's all we've got time for now but we hope you've enjoyed your session with us today. I hope you have a great week. It's half term week, so I hope that you get up to lots of fun with your family and able to get out and about in the sunshine. Have a great week and I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.